Well, anyone who is sharing the same house with someone who has been diagnosed with COVID-19, we have some tips for you. Joining us now is Paul Crouppen from Richland in Washington, an environmental scientist. Paul, good morning. Good morning, everybody. So, Paul, your daughter was infected with COVID-19, and while she was isolating in your home, you researched and wrote a report. Uh, some great tips here. We won't have time to get through all of them, but what is the first thing people should do if someone in their household contracts this virus? First thing is to recognize that you really have to, it's like in football, you have to block it and tackle. You have to identify the source of the contamination, and then you have to stop it from getting to other people. And you do that by identifying where it is and then disinfecting it with a rag and, and disinfectant solution to sanitize it. And you disinfected all surfaces that she may have touched, and that was countertops, doorknobs. Can you just be a little more specific? Oh, well, first, it's really hard to do this. You start with the high frequency contact surfaces and you work your way down into everything and anything else that a droplet can fall on. So you focus on breaking the pathway and disinfecting with the rag and spray, um, but you start with uh, uh, every, anything that she touches, the, uh, the light switches, the computers, the cell phones, the TV remote controls, the countertops, and then you just work your way. Every time you touch something, you clean it, you, you touch it, you clean it, and you uh, clean, you touch it and you clean it again and you do this again and again and again. And did she leave her room at all other than to go to the bathroom when she was staying with you guys? Uh, we were lucky. We were able to basically create a separate bedroom for her and, uh, and a bathroom. Other people who don't have, they have more common areas, it's harder to do. Um, but yes, she really didn't come out of the, her room except it was absolutely necessary. And uh, she ate by herself. Um, she was, you know, we, we were wearing masks and gloves if she, we were with her. She was wearing masks and gloves if we were with her. We basically did our darndest, our, as, worked as hard as we could to prevent germs from being transferred from her to us or to anything she touched. And she had her own everything, her own towels, her own bar of soap, her own toothpaste. Oh, yes. Um, in the bathroom, of course, everything she touched was placed in a box. It had her name on it. If somebody did have to go in there, they were not allowed to touch anything that she was touching. Same thing went for the refrigerator. Anything she wanted to eat, we put uh, everything into a box with her name on it, and that was her source of food. Uh, the, you know, Especially food. Uh, your mouth is open there's a real risk that that's when the germs can be transferred um, you know, onto your food. And you do not want the sixth person spraying, coughing, sneezing onto food or at the plates that other people are gonna be using. You mentioned to me yesterday, your daughter is now symptom free. Um, how does she think she contracted the virus? Um, my daughter is a science teacher at, at Everett High School, north of Seattle and uh, one of the students at the school was tested positive back on March 1st or 2nd, and he was one of the first students identified uh, in Washington outside of the Life Care Health Center where they had the first real outbreak. And that student walked around the school for seven days, um, and some of her students got to be in classes with that student. And so that's really how, how she was exposed. Wow. Well, she is now symptom free and it looks like you and your wife stayed symptom free as well. Paul, thank you so much. Unfortunately, we are out of time, um, but I will post a uh, link to our website later so people can get access to your report. All right. Stay safe, everybody. Thank All you. Right. Thank you so much, Paul. It